Africa. Encompassing 54 nations and over 1 billion people. A continent in transformation. A transformation that is powered by the ample natural and human resources of the continent. A land of contrasts too, changing with the times. Africa is today open to the world and is home to the world's fastest growing middle class consumer base. The GDP of the several African countries is growing at a rate that is significantly higher than the rest of the world. Africa continues to grow. Uh, despite its challenges, it offers the last bastion of growth. And what we have seen is a rise in middle class in Africa, a rise in consumption in Africa. Between 2000 and 2010, nearly 130 million people got added to the middle class. And by 2020, another 100 million are expected to be there. Shortly after independence, India started offering scholarships to African students to study in India. The Indian idea was to build a class of educated Africans who could lead their countries into the future. Some of those who studied in India went on to lead their countries like President Mutharika of Malawi and current President of Mozambique, Jacinto Nusi. The Government of India regularly invites civil servants and defence personnel from Africa to train at various Indian institutions of higher learning. Indian expertise in satellite technology has had a direct impact on Africa through the Pan-African e-learning platform. This program, run by the Government of India for the Organization of African Unity, is currently operational in 48 countries across Africa. In this e-learning platform, a consortium of Indian universities and hospitals provide learning opportunities to students and doctors across Africa. What the e-learning program does is to increase our capacity to host more and more students that we could not otherwise have hosted if it was not allowed. The Pan-African e-learning platform has already grown beyond India and has become a platform for teaching by Africans for Africa. They are absolutely useful uh, to Africa because they are giving you new ideas, new thinking, new methods of treatment that are being experimented or uh, are being taught in different schools all over the world. Uh, so you are up to date with what's happening. Indian-African relations over the years have witnessed various changes, moving from a period of high political, emotional and moral solidarity to a more material, concrete and developmental approach. This is the best of time to be in India, where India is opening up to the world and engaging particularly with Africa. Indian cinema has already discovered Africa, with Indian movies being filmed in almost all the countries of Africa. This visibility of Africa in the movies is helping to attract Indian tourists to Africa. The Indian tourists are overwhelmed by the spectacular scenic and historic beauty of Africa and its wildlife. Or seven, the Indo-Angolan trade stood at mere uh, at less than 500 million USD, but has risen to over 7 billion USD in 2013. The trade is grown mainly in oil transactions, and Angola provides about of 25 percent of oil that India imports from Africa. Indian imports from African countries have grown significantly in the last couple of years. Today, India is importing crude oil. 
liquid natural gas, inorganic chemicals, coal, fertilizers, phosphates, mineral ores, shelled cashews, gold and diamonds from Africa. Africa's energy resources are very significant for India. Energy cooperation is now one of the prominent areas of economic partnership between India and Africa. Indian public sector company BHEL commissioned a gas-powered power plant at Kosti in Sudan. A hydropower plant built and commissioned by BHEL in Rwanda was inaugurated by Honorable President Paul Kagame of Rwanda. In Botswana, Indian engineers from Wrights helped to plan and execute an upgrade to several small airports, making them suitable for larger aircraft to land. Indian corporate entities are present all over Africa. Indeed, even on the streets of most of Africa, it is difficult to miss Indian brands. Indian technology and management skills have helped to set up gigantic fertilizer factories like Tiffert in Tunisia. The ICS fertilizer factory in Senegal uses the ample phosphate deposits of the area to produce fertilizer. Another upcoming factory is the world's largest fertilizer plant in Port Hardcourt in Nigeria. Indian private sector expertise has helped to create the horticulture and floriculture exports in Ethiopia. In Kenya, Magadi Soda Factory. Once the prime jewel of colonial Britain was in danger of closing down, endangering thousands of livelihoods. India's Tata Group bought the factory and not only saved jobs, but also helped to revive one of Africa's best known factories. The new area where Indian expertise is making its presence felt is in the agro-based industries of Africa. At the southern tip of Malawi is located the Nami Gomba estate that grows tea and macadamia nuts. The gigantic estate was recently taken over by Calcutta-based Kothari Group. Recently, when the Ebola crisis hit West Africa, it was a moment of trauma for the populations of Ivory Coast, Guinea and Liberia. At such time of crisis, India reacts like a true friend. The government of India extended bilateral assistance in terms of materials and supplies worth 50,000 US dollars to Guinea and Liberia each to fight Ebola. In addition, India provided cash assistance of 500,000 US dollars to WHO as well as contribution of 10 million US dollars to UN Fund for Ebola and additional 2 million US dollars for purchase of protective gear to tackle Ebola. It is not just Indian medicines but also high quality and affordable Indian Medicare that is currently attracting African patients to India in large numbers. During civil wars in some African countries, soldiers of the Indian Army have served under the blue caps and banners of UN peacekeeping forces. Indian soldiers have served to maintain peace under difficult conditions. In Liberia, the Indian female peacekeepers did not just help in election and voting in Liberia. They also inspired a generation of young Liberian girls to become police women and take charge of their lives and countries. This was the first time any female peacekeepers had served under the banner of the United Nations. Current dynamics amidst both region is the understanding that led to emerging areas of cooperation which include the economic field, energy sector, human resources development, capacity building and security and maritime cooperation. 
For us personally, Africa has been a delight to work in. The governments have been very, very supportive. The regulatory regime very, very uh, favorable. The new Indian government has created a strong foreign policy uh, momentum. And this event will be a highlight of the diplomatic calendar, both for India and Africa. India and the African countries are devising new parameters for an enhanced and enlarged relationship appropriate to their new role in a changing world. India-Africa maintained magnanimous relations and the same is anticipated for ages to come.